from CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. Good morning to you. It's Thursday, May 25th, and right now on KPIX News, the drug debate in San Francisco is ramping up. We've showed you the video of open drug use as the mayor gave a speech at City Hall on the crisis. Well, today, why some are calling on recovery on demand, while others, they want to crack down. Also this morning, Amanda, family and community members will say their final goodbyes to Banco Brown. He will be laid to rest this morning. We have the details on that funeral service. And cool temperatures are going to last as we head into our Memorial Day weekend. At least we'll see some sunny skies into the afternoon hours. I'll break apart your first alert forecast just in time for the holiday coming up. And a deadly crash has shut down lanes on one of our busiest freeways this morning. I'll have details and new information on exactly what happened, plus the alternates on how to avoid some of these brake lights. But first, at 6 a.m., we want to get to our top stories. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis officially kicked off his presidential campaign. So they just keep crashing, huh? Yeah, I think we've got <laughs> a, just a massive number of people online, so it's um, servers are straining somewhat. He did it with Elon Musk, and he announced his run on Twitter Spaces, where there were some glitches that you just heard about, and it delayed the start of the discussion about 20 minutes. DeSantis said he wants to take on the status quo and did not mention... His GOP frontrunner, former President Donald Trump. Well, polls show DeSantis trailing Trump so far in the race for the nomination. Well, today there is still no deal on raising the federal government's debt ceiling, with the prospect of a default looming closer. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has warned the deadline is now just one week away. At the moment, there are no scheduled talks between President Biden and Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, but their teams continue to negotiate. San Francisco's mayor wants lawmakers to include extra money for public transit in the state budget. London Breed says the transit agencies are crucial for the city's economic recovery. She says in a letter to Assemblyman Phil Ting, quote, we cannot continue to thrive without public transportation. Directors of BART and Muni say they need a multi-billion dollar subsidy to avoid layoffs and service cuts as well. All right, let's get a check on our traffic now with Gianna, where you're following a fatal accident in Livermore. Yeah, unfortunately, this is causing major delays, and one person did die in this crash. We are getting new information. We've got Brian Kiley, our photojournalist, live on scene there, and you can see this truck that was involved in the crash. It's actually four vehicles that were involved in this uh, accident. It was a Mustang, according to the officers there on scene. It was driving at a high rate of speed through the freeway there. It hit one of the trucks. Actually, you don't even see the one. It's off in the distance. Then it was hit by another car, and then there was another vehicle that was involved. So four total. Unfortunately, the person in the Mustang is uh, in the Mustang was a person who died in this crash. But you can see several vehicles involved, especially this one. This truck is just a mangled mess. They're blocking lanes. So this is eastbound 580 in Livermore, right at Vasco Road. And you've got a lot of brake lights and delays because of that. So let's take a look at our map so you can see, even though it's counter commute, it's causing a lot of slow and go traffic in both directions. Westbound, especially for super commuters already seeing all those busy conditions for anyone coming out of Tracy approaching that Livermore area. Eastbound lanes, only one lane is open in the meantime. Coming up, I'll have your alternates on how to avoid some of these brake lights through this area. But first, let's get a look at your forecast. The weekend is almost here, and it's going to be a busy one, Jess. Busy and a little bit cool as low pressure is parked to just a little bit more inland compared to where we're at right now. That's allowing for some cooler weather to move in from the north, but we are still going to remain dry despite the fact that we have that marine layer. This is a stunning live look right now from our Mount Diablo cam off into Antioch. We're blanketed with that marine layer this morning, so underneath we can't see that beautiful sunrise, but trust me, it is there and it is in full force. We'll see the sun right around the corner heading into that 10 o'clock hour. It clears up nicely near Concord down into Fremont. Sunny skies expected for us today in the Santa Clara Valley. Along the coast, though, that marine layer still kind of floats around, and that's been the pattern all week long. The difference is the fact that we're cooling down even more. Today, we're actually sitting in the low 70s off in our inland areas, upper 50s and low 60s along the coast. I'll have your travel forecast coming up in just a bit. There's some issues going on in other portions of the state, but for now, over to you. Happening today, family and community members will say their final goodbyes to Banco Brown. He was killed by a security guard in a San Francisco Walgreens last month. His funeral services will be held this morning at Third Baptist Church of San Francisco.
for weeks. The deadly shooting sparked growing outrage from the community and even concern from city leaders about the transparency of the investigation. District Attorney Brooke Jenkins released security footage from that April 27th day that concluded the security guard was acting in self-defense. She noted that in the surveillance video and witness interviews, it was apparent that physical force, violence and threats of violence were used by Brown. So Jenkins decided not to file charges against the security guard. But just this week, California Attorney General Rob Bonta agreed to determine if Jenkins made the right decision when deciding not to file charges against that guard involved in the deadly shooting. Dr. Amos Brown, Attorney John Burris and Brown's family are all expected to speak at this morning service, which is scheduled to begin at 11 o'clock. Let's get to an update now on the fight against San Francisco's drug crisis. This morning, there's growing pressure to solve it, but there's also a divide over how. Supervisor Aaron Peskin is demanding that Mayor Breed shut down what he calls the city's drug supermarkets in 90 days. But the mayor has not agreed to that timeline. Wilson Walker shows us the push for change happening outside of City Hall. You know, people are struggling on our streets and they need to find hope. And we as a community need to inspire change within them. People are dying every day on our streets. And so another day, another event aimed at taking control of San Francisco's drug crisis. This one organized by a growing group of recovery advocates that want to make it easier for people to get help by offering recovery on demand. A simple concept, have a bed available when someone needs it. I think a lot of people are going to be surprised to hear that that's not the case right now. That is, that is not the case at all in San Francisco. Right now it takes around 10 days to get into treatment. While this push for change is coming largely from outside of City Hall, the mayor's office is. is plotting changes as well. A pilot program that will allow police to detain people, quote, when someone is so far under the influence of drugs that they may pose a danger to themselves or others, unquote. Now, details will be announced next week, but many of the city's service providers say it will be a disaster. You can call this whatever you want to call it, but when you are prioritizing a carceral approach to people who use drugs that need help, you're going to drive the overdose rates up. Divisions over how to help users and managed dealers are becoming old fault lines in San Francisco. What's new are the growing calls to try something different, even if they have to make it happen themselves. And we're going to make this change start in the day. The California Department of Health says there were nearly 400 fentanyl related deaths in San Francisco in 2021. The health department finds that's a 99% increase since 2019. That's a pretty big increase, Amanda. Justin. Well, the Berkeley Humane Society has more dogs than they know what to do with, and it has to do with a horrific animal hoarding case actually a state away. They want to get the dogs adopted, but Andre Nakano reports they're up against an even bigger problem. Berkeley Humane has about 45 dogs right now. That is way more than usual. It's also seen a large number of kittens. With the shelter being completely full, it really needs the community to step up to help the four-legged friends. Well, this is Guinness. This is one of our very special puppies. That Executive Director Jeffrey Zerwick has been at Berkeley Humane for about a decade. This is a difficult industry to be in. Uh, it's emotionally challenging, it's physically challenging, but the rewards are great. Zerwick recently faced one of the toughest challenges when the shelter took in a large number of dogs in need of a good home. So we brought dogs from the hoarding case in on the same day we also had dogs coming in from the Central Valley. So it was a pretty busy day at Berkeley Humane. These are the dogs brought in from the hoarding case. It's a, always a very difficult situation. Uh, in, in, in the case that we were responding to, there were 18 animals living in a trailer in, uh, outside of Reno, Nevada. All of them urgently needed medical care. Their needs are pretty um, intense. Uh, they have flea infestations, giardia. Um, they have social you know, behavior problems. Uh, and some of them are in need of uh, major uh, surgeries. The medical care and food are a huge expense for Berkeley Humane, especially at a time when donations have dwindled down drastically. Zerwick also says more animals are landing in shelters because of the downturn in the economy. What we're starting to see is that economically, people are being hit hard. They can't afford their animals. They're having to move. They're losing their housing. 
The shelter is hoping to fill up its donation bucket with one of its biggest fundraisers of the year. Guinness, the puppy you saw earlier in the story, picked up his name just in time for the Pints for Paws event, which is coming up next week. Well, if you do want to adopt one of these animals, the Berkeley Humane Adoption Center is on 9th Street. It's open Friday to Sunday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m.